a street legend straight out of the Bronx, New York. Peter Pistol Pete Rolak. A modern day Billy the Kid. What's up everybody, it's your girl B. Octavia and I am back with another video. Welcome to my channel. Or if you're not new, welcome back to my channel. I am from Washington, D.C., and I'm also an entrepreneur. All of my business links and how you can support the channel will be in the description below. But let's jump right into today's video. Today we will be talking about a street legend that we have not talked about before. A street legend straight out of the Bronx, New York. And his name is... Peter Pistol Pete Rolak. Pistol Pete got a reputation very early on as a feared but respected killer. Along with a heavy reputation of murder, in his prime, Pistol Pete made millions in the drug game, allegedly. A lot of folks compare Pistol Pete to, to a modern day Billy the Kid. You know, squeezing his trigger at any given moment and wouldn't hesitate or flinch a bit. Peter Pistol Pete Rolak was a blood-affiliated gang member and he had a very high ranking as a blood member. His stomping grounds were the Bronx, New York, where he grew up. And in my research, I found that there were a lot of and still are a lot of crip gangs in the bronx new york specifically i could be wrong but that's what i found right so that only tells me that you know today and especially at that time that we're speaking of the 80s and 90s the odds were against bloods in that certain area it opposed a lot of problems for blood members to operate their narcotic selling or whatever they was into at the time their overall operations he started his own gang called sex money murder with majority of his soldiers being of african-american descent this street organization that he created was started in 1993 and what i found interesting is it's still thriving to this day the sex money murder organization is still very relevant in various articles court documents etc indictments a lot of members from that time a lot of members of today's time have been arrested and so on and so forth so i found that interesting that this organization can still keep its name alive and adapt to the changes of the economy the changes of well i guess a criminal don't gotta change his stripes you know whatever cheater don't gotta change you know what i'm saying whatever so this gang was very well known and still is today from the sound view section of the bronx to all over the east coast as well as southern and southwestern parts of the United States. Within this organization, according to the feds, he and his counterparts operation entailed laundering drug money, which made it fairly easy for this organization to expand their various street business ventures. The feds laid it all out, drug trafficking, racketeering, armed robbery assault and murder during certain stints in prison pistol p made better and greater ties with the united bloods nation and instead of him just being a part of their section of the bloods they wanted him to create his own section and because Pistol P did already have a very high ranking reputation with the Bloods. That's what they wanted to do. They gave him his own set. We, of course, talk about and highlight the gun violence going down on the East Coast. But our elders are quick to always remind us that this is nothing compared to how it used to be in the 80s and the 90s. And I personally feel like 
Pistol Pete Rolex and the gang he created was two huge reasons why people even said that. Why that statement has to be repeated. I've talked about many street legends and a lot of them do have the same characteristics. Even if we talking about the mob, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for a leader to call a hit on somebody, have somebody else do it. You know what I'm saying? And that became such a repeated thing from this man to that man that some people do forget that it's actual leaders out here that will take penitentiary chance after penitentiary chance after penitentiary chance. So during the time that Pistol Pete was growing his reputation with the United Bloods Nation, he had his own gang, he had his ear to the street while he was in prison, well, the feds had their ear to the phones and watching his mail and things like that. They figured out that and alleged that he was, you know, getting shipments and having things shipped out and things like that for his business. But one of the last times he was arrested, it was on gun charges, right? So, boom. He was doing his bid all the while, growing his reputation, whatever, doing his thing behind the bars. Ear to the streets, like I said to y'all, right? Okay, cool. His mom bailed him out, you know what I'm saying, from his gun charge when the time was right. She bailed him out, and he was only out for about two weeks. Because at the time of his last arrest, he was 20 years old. He was arrested on murder charges, and he actually beat the murder charge, okay? So when he went to court for the murder charge, they dismissed it only to take him into custody on drug charges. The feds is not going to let you go for just nothing. So in 1996, he was taken into custody for the last time. It's a shame that he got arrested at such a young age, but I think that a lot of people can't understand how a person, they grow mentally more than age can even define how old you are. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of young men, especially on the East Coast, they burn themselves out at a very young age. So, Pistol Pete ended up getting sentenced to 105 years with no possibility of parole. He pleaded guilty to murdering and ordering the murder of six people, attempting to murder one person and conspiring to kill another two people who were ultimately killed by members of Rolex gang. So, I believe that he ended up confessing to certain things. He ended up pleading guilty, of course, and owning up to certain things so that he could avoid the death penalty. I mean, to be put to death in your mid-20s, late-20s, whatever, they probably would have did it sooner back then because they was getting people to fuck out the way for the rest of his life he will be in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day his visitation will be restricted and all of his visits will be videotaped you know honestly don't get me wrong i do think that certain people do deserve to be in jail for the rest of their lives you know serial killers child molesters things like that but I don't necessarily think that certain people can't be rehabilitated. It's like if if a person, if you know a person has power and they use it in a negative way, why don't you try to rehabilitate them, especially while they're at a good age, you know, and so they can use their power in a more positive way. I feel like it's all about how you utilize it. And, you know, I get it. Some inmates can be like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna use my power for bad. I'ma go out here and do good and all that shit and be lying to your face. But to all out give a 20, 21 year old no possibility of parole, like I don't necessarily agree with that part. To say that, hey, this person specifically 
cannot be rehabilitated. There is nothing we can do to help them. And you know what? We're going to push them in confinement, 23 hours and one, whatever. All that for the rest of their lives. And they're just going to turn out to be even worse people. Like, it's not going to be conducive to who he possibly could be. I can't imagine being that young and being in that situation, but he already led a very dangerous life before even being incarcerated at all. You know, it's sad that, especially in New York, these young men still to this day feel like they need each other in that way. They feel like they need to rep something. They feel like they need to be a part of something that is just one thing, you know? I feel like to put that much pressure on you when as a black man or I don't know how diverse it is now as a Hispanic, whatever, right? Because New York is a melting pot. It's already enough pressure on y'all to be all of the worst things that you could possibly be. You know, it's already enough pressure on y'all to do that. It'll be a nice change if y'all put pressure on yourselves to be the best that y'all can be. Not the best killer, not the best drug dealer, because there's not no longevity in it. Like, you know, it is unfortunate that it's life without the possibility of parole, and I don't know if that can get deducted or, you know, what have you. People still showing love to him, so... Them same people need to be helping him out while he doing his time. You know, I don't necessarily be the one to say this person shouldn't get out. That person shouldn't get out. Sometimes I do say that. I ain't even going to lie. But it's like, if you really feel like Frim, 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 just like Free Larry Hoover type shit, it's a way that you can support and it's a way that you can start a movement on his behalf. It's a way that... Like, do that. You know what I'm saying? Get this shit working so that y'all can't possibly help get y'all mans out. Maybe he will be have a more positive impact. You know what I'm saying? I hope that for anybody. And honestly, I think that a mother's strength and a mother's guidance can save you. Because Lord knows where Pistol Pete's life would have ended up. He was living a very dangerous lifestyle. And at a very safe place in the game, but at the same time, those people get knocked off too. Them people get set up too. So it's like sometimes I do believe that prison saves you. Not to say that you can't get killed in prison, but sometimes prison will save somebody's life. And that'll be God helping you right there. But to end this off, you know, like I said, if it's frim, 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 then y'all need to be putting money on his books and things like that. Like, support him, you know what I'm saying? Make him feel loved like y'all type him on social media because, and it's, it's with Pistol Pete and with people like him. Like, support them, you know what I'm saying? Do what you can. Make them feel loved, you know, because he can't see the comments that y'all typing he can't see none of that you know what i'm saying make him know it he been in there for a very long time i was born in 96 okay i am 25 years old now so 25 26 ish years like that he's been behind bars and i would hope that for his sake that he has become a better person i will hope that he doesn't so much think of just gang life as life you know because that's not a healthy way to live um you don't have to dedicate yourself to a religion or anything like that but that's usually how it goes and it's no judgment there you have to focus on the most positive aspects of your life when you are doing life you feel what I'm saying? Like, that's not easy for nobody. Like, and to, and you got to see it like people like 6 9 and all them, they switched up on the gang that they was vouching for. They switched up on people that they was taking care of, people that was under them. And it's people like Pistol Pete that set a precedent in New York on the East Coast, period to stay solid and no matter how much time you get put on you 
that you can remain solid. Get solid, stay solid, remain solid. And I commend him for that because it's a lot of niggas that would just take two years instead of doing that time, doing that big boy time that you got to do. To get that at 20 years old, I can't even fathom it, but leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Like the video, shout out to YouTube for taking away the dislike button thing where you can see how many people do it because that be the devil. People be thinking that they affecting something and you really not. Shout out to YouTube. It's your girl B. Octavia and I will see y'all in my next video. Shout out to y'all. We almost at 10K. Much love. Blessings, peace, prosperity, and have a good day tomorrow, most of all.